It's February 3rd and Zine Quest is back. So not only do we have some cool board game Kickstarters, but we've also got some cool zines. So let's get to it. It's Roll for Crits Kickstarter Pickstarter. Aeon's End is back with Aeon's End Outcast, the new standalone expansion. If you don't know, Aeon's End is a deck building game, take place in the world and around a Gravehold, usually trying to protect it. But now you are not protecting Gravehold because you are the outcast. You were shunned from new Gravehold. And now you are trying to protect your old master, rival, or not, I'm not 100% sure of the connection, but it's Zaxos. If you played previous games, you know he was a bit of a weird one who went rogue and unfortunately was kicked out. And now you'll be protecting him, but that also means he'll have some tricks of his own. Unlike previous games, he'll have his own little deck of cards to be able to mess with and won't be just protecting a helpless Gravehold city. Of course, this comes with new Breach Mages with a lot of cool abilities and tokens, like one that involved changing, getting special abilities every time you took damage, one placed runes on the different cards you could buy. So overall, really interesting. Uh, it seems to continue the story that's going on. I like that a lot, especially since we finished Legacy. It also was nice to know what was going on. And I like to believe our characters, Oblivious and Shin, are somewhere out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, you guys watching haven't seen the end of our Legacy campaign yet. That'll be coming, uh, hopefully, over the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did have a lot of fun playing that version of the game. And I think it's cool that they released these these big continuations. You know, some of them are st stand, a lot of them are standalone, but can also be mixed with the originals. Well, speaking of which, you can buy most of those here you can get what was exclusive and now packs and stuff the base original because we started a little bit mid-session we didn't start with the original aeon's end and this may be a place for me to be now pick up that maybe a couple other new things mm -hmm. you can of course just just get outcast if you want for 69 dollars. like we said it is standalone this isn't a you need the base for it of course that means you can have access to more cards for more fun weird things or whatever you want to do but definitely check it out if you like deck building games or if you want to continue your Aeon's End story. Plyos Games has Vampire the Masquerade Chapters, a new cooperative storytelling RPG hybrid game based on the Vampire the Masquerade universe. So players are going to be taking on the roles of vampires, going down seedy back alleys, making deals, fighting folks, looking for food, all that fun stuff. You'll be reading story cards and making choices as to how you want to respond to any given situation. So you might approach them and try to fight your enemies, or you might try to reason with them, use your diplomatic abilities. You'll have your own character with its own set of skills and different levels of progression as the game goes on. You'll sort of level up and get new abilities. There's also a mystery solving component to it. You'll be looking for clues to try to uncover what's going on in different chapters, as well as a little tactical section. You have your own minis, so there will be also a tactical combat strategy section to the game. This is a cool looking game, I thought, because of course Vampire the Masquerade is a cool property. But as far as RPG hybrids go, I feel like this one is very heavily on the RPG side. The, the way that the character sheets work, you've got initiative ratings, <laughs> things like that. Very much in that world, but all in one box and you can replay it and make different choices. You don't have to get any other paper, minis, dioramas, what have you. It's all in there. Right. And what's really nice, I mean, this is, we've seen so many Vampire the Masquerade games being announced, either on Kicks or just being announced to be made. But what I like about that is I think also uh, Warhammer did the same thing. I'm not sure if it's based or 400K in vi more video game sense. Uh huh. 40K. 40K. Yeah, Sorry, too, many K's. <laughs> too many Ks. Too many Ks. And but spreading it out so there's a lot of different games that play differently. So you, if you like that world, maybe if you want to go full RPG, you can just get the RPG book. But if you don't have the time to read, to have someone play the GM and design the world, you can have this. If you'd rather just the card game, there's the ECG, I think it was an ECG they're making or something. like. Possibly. <laughs> it allows for you to get that, get the taste of the Vampire Masquerade world without having to sort of, with getting the kind of mechanics you want. Uh, there are extra chapters. You can go in for the base game for $113, which is a little on the higher end, but uh, they are gonna have a bunch of stretch goals and even some more uh, maybe expansion content you can look for. If it's something that you like, if you like that world, then take a look. Parks was a very popular game back in 2019, so much that it made a lot of people's top games list for that year. Now it's back with an expansion and a new game in the Parks world. If you don't know, Parks is celebrating all the national parks in, I think, just the United States, maybe all North America. And you are going to be walking, exploring them, hiking to get different views, photos. And then this expansion, if you haven't guessed it, brings sort of night into it. You may find a tent, which you can then camp and then take photos of stars, change your equipment, and other really cool abilities. 
Memories is a different game, not an expansion. Still uses the art from Park, so a lot of the beautiful pictures, but there are three core sets. There are standalone for the most part with different sets from different parks, but also different abilities. And so you can play these memory game, but with different challenges or perks. You can take a look at them. They can all be mixed together. So you can get a really large crazy game. And if you're looking for certain parks, you can see which parks are in which set. They do have a special box you can buy that fits all three of them. But honestly, all three of the boxes together make this really beautiful diorama with like a moose in a river. And I'm like, ah, that's what I would want to see. <laughs> yeah, you got that cool panorama on your shelf, really impress people. <laughs> but the uh, parks in general was a game on a very big regret for me because I do like national parks. I visited them a lot more when I was younger. A regret was, that you missed out on it. Yeah, uh, I was on the West Coast. They're a lot closer than they are to where I am now. <laughs> so you can actually get the base, which is something I plan to take advantage of. Yeah, that was, a, that was a blind spot for me last year too, but everybody raved about it. Everybody said it was a lot of fun and it looks really beautiful. And it's cool and interesting that they're doing this like three different sets of this new game. It's very clever and definitely something that could be sold at national parks. Oh yeah, this is perfect for that. Museum well, gift it's shop. It's also because it's very memory, so I think uh, younger kids who play. I don't know about the age for base park, so that could be mm. nice. Uh, if you're just looking for like Nightfall or any of the memory boxes, they're about $22 each. Of course, like I said, you can get more if you get throwing the park's base in there or if you get all the memory sets together with the special box. So take a look at how you want to explore parks, but I definitely suggest taking a look or maybe at the very least, go visit National Park yourself. As we mentioned at the top of the show, this month is Zine Quest on Kickstarter, uh, the second Zine Quest since they kicked it off in 2019. This is a month in which they promote a lot of role-playing games, specifically in zine form. So usually they're shorter, often made for one-shots or modules for other games. And what's great about them is, number one, they're super cheap. Yeah. So a lot of times you can get the PDF or even the book for between like one and five bucks. Uh, so they're really easy if you like the sound of them, there's very little risk involved. And what I like about them too is uh, it feels like an opportunity for designers to really explore some weirder spaces, some genres that aren't typically, it's not just fantasy and sci-fi that you see mm -hmm. in so many, or if it is, there's some kind of a twist on it. I feel like it's sometimes, in some ways, it's like the indie indie movies of, <laughs> of RPGs, the stuff that they explore. So we're just gonna highlight a few of the ones that we thought looked cool, especially some of the weirder ones for it that I like. So Fruit of Law is one that is based around this uh, concept from Judaism that there's a commandment, there's like over 600 commandments for each fr uh, seed in a pomegranate, that's a thing. <laughs> and um, this is basically players are coming up with their own laws and it uses an actual pomegranate. It's supposed to be like a part of the game. <laughs> so you're meant to have a pomegranate with you as you play this and make these laws. Uh, make sure that everyone's wearing gloves and <laughs> you're not wearing anything you're afraid to get stained. Yeah, yeah, something like that. There's a game called The Weight. I'm calling, even calling these games, some of them are like experiences. The Weight is about a loved one dying. So it's every, it's everyone is sitting around uh, waiting for like a loved one who's dying and you are, as the game goes on, developing who this person was and what they meant to you and your relationship with them. Like heavy stuff. Yeah, I see that ending two ways. <laughs> one, squabbling over the inherence. Or two, someone gets a pillow. <laughs> Hopefully you play with a mature group for that one that can handle it. Uh, there's one called The Great Soul Train Robbery and that one involves a train heist, but this train happens to be heading to hell. So I thought that was a cool concept. There are two games on here that are continuations of other RPGs too. Candlelight can work as a one shot. It's like a dark game, but it also works with this RPG called Trophy that was a Kickstarter pick a little while back on our show. So I thought that was pretty neat. You could play them together or separately. And similarly, there's one called Dead Halt, which is this sci-fi hotel concept. That was from Zine Quest last year. I think I actually backed it, the first one, and this is a new add-on for that they have. So. There's some cool ones. What was yeah. some of you like? I only picked two mostly because I was expecting you to drop and get so many, I feel bad now. <laughs> but the first one I got is Moon Sailors, not to be confused with Sailor Moon. This one, it seems to be you are exploring like empty areas in space, like abandoned stations and stuff, but you're not all really together. You're actually going to be like, while you explore, other people ask you questions like, are you gonna open that door? What, are you gonna investigate that sound? And you will gain evidence, but you also leave things behind. So someone else may visit it when you play, they play their character and find some of the stuff you have. You may never actually meet each other, but you could sort of 
see the impressions you left. And I thought that was a very curious thing, especially the idea of this sort of the vast loneliness in space when you start exploring that, you know, it can be a very empty, sad place. <laughs> yeah. And the last one seems to be more of a, a, you can use it as addition to other things and that's safe and sound. This is all about having that sort of hideaway or your little place in the RPG where you can relax instead of just being a boring, maybe abandoned house infested with raccoons, you know. It's all about places you build up like the bed, the furniture. Maybe I like this because I'm still excited for Animal Crossing to come in a few months. <laughs> but I thought it just sounded like really cool. I also like the idea of when you build up not just your character in RPG, like the classic D&D RPGs, but also buildings and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like it's your little hideaway, your, your campfire where mm -hmm. you go to save your game. <laughs> Except you get to do decorate it with some cool stuff. <laughs> so absolutely take a look. There's a lot of these. There's going to be more throughout the month. I don't know if we'll maybe shout out a few if they pop up on our radar as I'm the sure month goes will, on. I'm sure we will, because as you said, they always tend to be, There's this is where we get some weird interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah, they get to dive deep into some subjects we don't see too often. So we got some really big board games that came out, all of them like Titans in some way or another. There are also some plenty of others too, so you can let us know what we missed. But I'm really curious on the zines, because I mean, we are in zine quiz. Apparently, that's now going to be a thing every February. That's a thing. <laughs> uh, I won't complain. So let us know what zines you're excited for. Is it ones that are continuations like Candlelight of previous zines, or maybe something completely new? Let us know in those comments right down below. Please do that. Uh, thanks, guys. Until next time, keep on backing. I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this was Kickstarter Pickstarter. We would love it if you liked and subscribed to this channel and supported us on Patreon as well. For legal reasons, we've got to disclose we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with more awesome content.